I think there's this misconception that architecture comes into being as this kind of singular act of the architect where we have this grand vision and it sort of falls out of us onto the page. This is a process and it's a pretty long process. It always starts with an idea and a sketch and then we start taking that idea and those sketches and testing it in different ways. One of the new tools that I've been experimenting with lately has been Midjourney. So I wanna show you what I've been doing and some of those experiments. Midjourney can be really addicting. It's this strange mix between gambling and watching those old Polaroids develop, you know, where you used to shake the photo and it would appear in front of your eyes. That's exactly what this is like. And you can spend a lot of time kind of spinning your wheels and just generating building after building after building. The way I'm thinking about this is to kind of zoom out and think about it more in the abstract. As if you were, say, Michael Heiser, you're sculpting giant landscapes. You're Richard Serra. You're using materials in a very specific way. The moment you use this to start trying to create some sort of building type, like for example, a sauna. This is just an averaging of all the data that's fed into it. So all it's doing is kind of slicing and dicing all of those sauna images and you end up getting saunas that look very familiar. I really wanna come up with something that is driven by a strong idea. I'm using Midjourney to solve a problem that I had before I went to Midjourney. So this is the recipe that I have for doing that. So I start the prompt with an important modifier and that's because words closer to the front of the prompt are gonna have more influence on the final result. I typically use either the type of shot, so an aerial view, or a term that sets a general direction like modern or industrial. Then I'm gonna call out the subject of the image. And I like to think in terms of elemental forms rather than say a cabin. And the more strange and specific you can make this, the more interesting your result will be. And I've had really good luck using odd historic building terms. Adding material references is helpful to steer the final images. So for example, a glass grain silo. And then I wanna reference any highly specific details that I want shown in the image, followed by the setting or environment. And the more detail you give it here, the more control over the final output you're gonna have. I specifically like referencing color tones that are gonna match the mood that I'm going for. Now character modifiers, they can be anything from a specific magazine style, an architect, or one of my favorites is to reference other photographers or artists. So if you say, by Richard Serra, you're gonna get a lot of core 10 steel in your image. And you can actually play with this to great effect. The end of the prompt, you can preset to autofill. Mine is set to an aspect ratio of 16 by nine, which is a wide format image. If you use a vertical aspect, you'll get a different result. If you're going for a detail shot, you might use something like four by five. The last thing I'll add is a style modifier of 1000, and that's just telling Midjourney to be wildly creative. So I'll remix and I'll reprompt until I have a set of base images that I'm happy with, and then I'll use those to start blending, which is a key part of the process. Blending takes two and up to four images and combines them. And in amongst all of the dead ends, you're gonna uncover something really unexpected. And then you're gonna use those images to work a similar process. None of these are a first output. They're the result of blending, remixing, and essentially guiding Midjourney to select for certain traits in each iteration. And hopefully you'll end up with a final result which you can upscale and use in the next part of your process. And in a way, I'm kind of finding this is like sketching where there's a weird artifact that's serving as this kind of crack. It's exposing this entirely new opportunity that I hadn't previously considered. So I have these images here in Procreate and I wanna start pushing the design forward. And I'm looking at some of these things which look like anomalies in these images. We have this heavy stone base and this lighter wood shroud that's going over the top of it. And I like how this image relates to this image in that there is this kind of light screen element. And thinking about this in the context of the live work project, I wonder if there's a way that we can not only separate these pieces horizontally, which, you know, initially I was thinking it was a kind of an L-shaped arrangement, but I wonder if there's a way that this shroud can provide this sort of unifying element on the exterior. And this work element here, which is naturally smaller, the footprint of this is smaller, this could actually move in and out. So there could be a unifying point. You know, maybe this is the boundary between work and life, right? And this piece could move in and out on these tracks and be actually exposed to have an entirely different aspect in the landscape. Could be even this kind of remote um, structure. Could be a guest house. It, you know, could be this kind of multifunctional space that is changeable. Um, and then it moves in and out of these kind of screen wall elements. And in this way, you have this visual separation. So until you are 
viewing it actually, you know, dead on like this, you don't sense that it's even there. And so that in itself is nice. You have this kind of parallax effect if you create these exterior wood screens where you're seeing a solid element from this zone. And as you get closer to it and you have this orthogonal relationship, you actually see the volume that's behind it. And that's where, you know, images like this, I mean, this is perfect for that. This is almost like all those old tobacco barns where they have these slats that kind of open up. It really changes the exterior face of this. So as you're standing here, can't see a thing. And as you come here, you can see all the way through. Real simple exterior volume and a very complex relationship between inside and out. Using Midjourney allows me to explore many more options than I could previously. Nothing is precious, and equally nothing is exactly correct or good enough to appropriate as finished architecture. It's another tool to use and another waypoint in the design process.